Welcome back to Orange Line. Before we go to sports chat, Chris Atlaxon has a story about the spring alumni football game. On Saturday, Baker University football players suited up to take the field, as did a team full of Baker University football alums. It's fun uh, on both sides. We just have that character towards each other where we uh, have all good laughs and everything. So. Well, I thought, you know, it's tough with an alumni game just to get a smooth ball game going and, and you never know who's coming back. I, I thought they brought back some great football players, plus our seniors. Oh, it's it's pretty fun. It's, it's fun playing with all the old guys I used to, but, you know, looking over there, you kind of, you kind of miss playing with your, your old teammates, but it's, it's a lot of fun. We all enjoy it. The game started off strong for the varsity team when freshman Aaron Terrell scored the first touchdown on a 12-yard run. They scored yet again when junior Calvin Pierce intercepted a pass and returned it for their second touchdown of the game. We'll probably lose about 42 to 3. I hope we're going to get one field goal. So. The alums stayed in the game with a touchdown of their own, bringing them within a score. But freshman Jake Green kept the game out of reach with a touchdown pass to end the game. No, I think we're going to probably beat them by maybe four touchdowns. No, no, probably, probably six, six touchdowns. Just had a lot of memories going through my head, you know, watching them play. And, it, and you get to appreciate how good they were. You know, that Matt can still fire it around. Kendall can still fire the ball, too. And then you look at uh, Ryan Pitts out there catching it. Mackie Valentin's a good player. And then Richie Bryant looks as good as he's looked in three years. The alumni played well, but it was the varsity team that took the game 21-7. The Baker University football team will start off their 2010 season in Ottawa to play Ottawa University on Saturday, August 28th. This has been Chris Satlaxon for KMBU TV. Thanks for that, Chris. I'm now joined here with Alex Chiraldi, and we're going to give you this week's sports chat. We're going to go ahead and start off by talking about the Baker baseball team, and they went into last weekend, their final three games of the season, having to win all three of those games. They started off Friday at Mid-American Nazarene and lost their first game, which put them out of playoff contention. The guys came up one game short of the postseason tournament goal. The team lost its first game to the Pioneers 12-2, and that game was in Olathe. Senior Nick Peterson came out and he set the tone early for Baker. He hit a two-run homer in the first inning, but it was quickly answered by Mid-America and they put up three runs in both the first and second innings. So that tough loss put the Wildcats, like I said earlier, out of contention. The team did bounce back on Friday and they came out to sweep on its senior day at Sauter Field. They came out hot and run-rolled Mid-America 15-2 off of 18 hits, which is a huge accomplishment for them. Six players had multi-hit games, including three hits apiece from Nick Peterson, Brandon Truitt, and Jared Herbert. Also, Herbert, Steven Stewart, and Dustin Mumau all collected three RBIs apiece, so a good start to the Wildcats on their senior day. The team won the second game of the doubleheader 3-2. The game was tied until the Wildcats came through with a run in the sixth inning to pull ahead and keep the lead. Chris Cummins grabbed another win, and Jeremy Wright won a perfect 3-for-3 three three at the plate, so a good ending for him on his senior day. Six seniors were recognized last weekend, and that includes Nick Peterson, Jeremy Wright, Jeremiah White, Dustin Mumau, Tad Eubanks, and Ian Sutherland. So congratulations to them and their careers at Baker. The Wildcats finished the year tied for fifth place in the hack. And in the past, normally the top six teams advanced to post play. But this year, a new format was put into place where the conference was divided into the east and west, and the top three teams from each side advanced to the tournament. So even though the baseball team did beat two of the teams that are advancing to playoffs, they're in the other divisions. So unfortunately, they will not be able to make it to postseason play. But congratulations to them. They had a 13 and 15 record in conference and a strong year overall. And good job to those seniors again. Alex, let's talk about track. This past weekend, the track and field team competed in their conference championship. The women came away second and the men came away third. So congratulations to both teams. Many Wildcats contributed to the great finish, including Devin Freeman, Aubrey Gustin, and the 4x400 relay team, and Aaron Hannon, who was the men's top overall scorer, weighing in with 30 points. Two women took home gold medals, Freeman in the 10K and Gustin in the javelin throw. Coach Zach Hindler was once again named Coach of the Year since his last win in 2008. So congratulations to him. 
So Kelsey, can you tell me how softball finished up this season? Yes, the softball team season is over. We made it to the postseason playoffs in the tournament for the first time since I've been here, and that's four years. So that was a good accomplishment in itself. We ended up getting the eighth seed, so we had to play the number one seed, which was Lindenwood University, of course. <laughs> um, so we traveled to St. Charles, Missouri to play them on their home field. We came out and surprised Lindenwood in the first game and took a game from them with a score to two to one. Brooke Allen came out as our leadoff hitter and she set the tone in the first inning by smacking a triple to the fence and scored for us. And that really, like I said, set the tone early in the game. Heather Gruber pitched a great game and was really solid for us on the mound and took care on the defensive end of things. She had three strikeouts and gave up just one earned run to a team who usually averages five a game. Then unfortunately due to weather, we were unable to get game two in Friday evening and came out the next day and dropped the second game of the series 10 to three. Lindenwood's bats were too hot and they had 17 hits, which was too much for us to keep up with. In the deciding game, we came out strong again and scored a run in the first inning and Brooke Allen again led off with a triple and she was able to score. Lindenwood though fought back and added two on the board in the third inning and then they just got on a roll after that. Um, with their offense. They had 11 total hits to R4 and they ended up taking that game 9-1. to one. So that concluded the year for the softball team and it was pretty cool to come out and make a statement against the number one seed. We took a game from them, um, especially our first postseason appearance in a long time. So we ended the year with an 18-31 overall record and that eight spot in the conference. Well congratulations, it was a really really good season. Thank you very much. We're all proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> That wraps up this week's sports chat, and she's Alex Giraldi. Thanks for joining me here. No problem. I will see you guys all next year. Well, that's all we have for this week's episode of Orange Line and our final one of the year. Thank you for all your continued support this whole year. All of the Orange Line staff appreciates it. I'm Kelsey Epperson signing off for the last time ever on Orange Line.